assure you that my main interest is all Nigerians in all parts of Nigeria. Hard times await public officers who corruptly enrich themselves at the detriment of the nation. Federal government strategizes towards medicine sufficiency and affordability. The places that we've gone, all the commanders have told us they're up to date. These have been paid in some of the places and we're glad about that one. And Nigerian army gets a pat on the back for resilience. A warm welcome to NTA Network News. I'm Elizabeth Stoba in Abuja. Dr. Ogunyemi is in Lagos while Mohammed Ibrahim joins us from Maiduguri. President Mohamed Buhari says public officials who undermine the economy and deny workers their benefits by corruptly enriching themselves with public funds will not escape the current anti-corruption dragnet. Receiving leaders of the All Progressives Congress and stakeholders from Benue State on Solidarity Visit, President, the President described fraudulent appropriation of the nation's resources as not only unjust but intolerable. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has details. How can you go to sleep when you are workers have been, been fed for six months? A pertinent question by President Muhammad Buhari, perhaps directed at governors constantly defaulting in the payment of workers' salary. He wondered how the workers have been managing to pay rent, buy food, send their children to school, and take care of their health needs in such situations. I assure you that my main interest is all Nigerians in all parts of Nigeria. Therefore, anybody who try to create any impression that I prefer any group across a sinister or religion, let him dare me by being caught red-handed stealing public funds. <laughs> Jailing some of the people, I think, will remind those who are sitting there that uh, they may not get away with it finally. For now, the president said he will continue to mount pressure on the governors towards ensuring that the bailout funds and other relief support to their states are utilized effectively for the purposes intended. President Buhari takes pride in the significant progress made in diversifying the nation's economy through agriculture, saying more individuals and entrepreneurs have now embraced farming and Nigeria will soon achieve the desired food sufficiency and security. We are very proud of what we achieved with the resources available to us. The president noted that the killings in Benue, Zamfara, and Taraba states, as well as other parts of the country, were carried out by those he described as ungodly people who have no religious or ethnic inclinations. He, however, said security personnel are already uncovering the network of the killers and arresting them for necessary action. I'm quite aware of what is happening. I'm doing my best through the legal ways to stabilize the situation. But uh, as I said, our campaign objective remains the same. Security, economy, and fighting corruption. Leader of the delegation, Senator George Akume, said the narrative in Benue State about the federal government is fast changing as more people have discovered the good intentions of the Buhari presidency to secure lives and property of Nigerians and alleviate poverty. The people, he emphasized, are now fully aware of President Buhari's genuine commitment to national prosperity, his sincere love for the people, and willingness to even die for the good of all. Senator Akume told the president that the APC members in the state have started sensitizing and mobilizing voters for the 2019 elections. Came the total sense of involvement and commitment to his re-election bid. The man who has worked so tirelessly to turn around the fortune of this country deserves to be supported by all well-meaning Nigerians. This has nothing to do with politics. The return of peace to the Bene Valley, I think, in my opinion, is critical as to how we're going to deliver the overall uh, architecture of our security. And in that regard, I think Mr. President deserves to be commended. And our visit here was actually in part to show solidarity with him, to associate with his desires for a return of peace you know, to the Benue Valley, and in particular to Benue State. During the visit, 
The delegation told the president that religion and ethnicity were used in Benue State for sinister purposes to score cheap political points. The Benue stakeholders commended the president for the flag of, of the dualization of the Abuja Kefi Lafia Makurdi highways, urging more attention on the Makurdi Otupo Road as well as the water projects in Boko and other parts of the state. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. In another development, President Muhammad Buhari has directed the setting up of an interministerial committee to figure out how drugs for humans and livestock can be made available in the country at a fraction of the prevailing prices. Receiving executive members of the pharmaceutical company Graham Fox on a courtesy visit, the president reiterated the commitment of his administration towards improving the quality of life of Nigerians. Here again is Adam Asambo. Records show that about 70% of Nigerians cannot afford modern medicines produced by multinational companies due to their high prices and most of those in the country operate at less than 30% installed capacity. Executive members of Grahan Folks Pharmaceutical Company led by Sam Da Azaya, a pharmacist, were therefore in the State House to inform the President of their desire to make essential medicines and livestock drugs available to the public at significantly reduced reduced prices. Mr. Ndai Zaya said the company plans to bring down the prices of most of the commonly used medicines by up to 60% as well as producing only generic medicines as against patented ones. This, he said, would be achieved without a single cover subsidy from government but with active pharmaceutical ingredients imported from China and India for the approved local production companies in Nigeria. He said the finished products would not only be sold at fixed prices, but millions of jobs would be created across Nigeria as the pharmaceutical plants will be operating at near maximum capacity. President Muhammad Buhari described the proposal by the company as not only patriotic and noble, but in line with the government's drive for self-sufficiency and economic diversification. He charged the ministers of health and agriculture to collaborate effectively with the company, short circuit disruptive bureaucracy, and brief him on the progress made from time to time. It will be recalled that earlier in the life of the Buhari administration, the president reduced tariff on pharmaceutical raw materials and increased the one for finished imported products. This was to boost and encourage local production of medicines for the benefit of ordinary Nigerians. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Now, 40 containers of tramadol and other pharmaceutical products with duly paid value of 7.3 billion naira have been intercepted by a Papa Area Command of the Nigeria Customs Service. Controller General of Customs, Hamid Ali, who conducted journalists round the seized items, described the feat as crucial to the nation's economy. Paul Mukago has details. This is the highest seizure of tramadol drugs made by the Apapa Area Command of Nigeria Customs Service. Concern about the volume of seizures and the reported attempts to influence officers with $412,000, the Comptroller General, Colonel Amid Ibrahim Ali, disclosed that suspects remotely connected to the crime will be prosecuted after investigation. Zone Asia. In the same vein, it showed the media trailer load of tramadol tablets and the money offered officers by suspects. This money was given in a bid to get this container released by our own officers. And uh, in the course of doing that, our officers took the money and then reported. We have to go and set up a small tax force for the clearance of this and give them the mandate and give them a time frame. These things must be evacuated as quickly as possible. Two helicopters, one intended for export and the other imported from the United States of America were among items impounded. In Lagos, Paul Omukagu, NTA News. Sequel to the deteriorating security situation on the Nigeria-Chad border, 
Minister of Defense Mansur Dang Ali is in charge to meet with President Idris Derby and his defense counterpart from the country. Diplomatic sources say the recent increase in Boko Haram activities along the border is as a result of the inability of Chad to play its role in the multinational joint task force put together to repel attacks by Boko Haram terrorists in neighboring countries of Niger, Chad and Cameroon. The sources say Chad is also having internal security challenges which led to the pulling away of its forces, manning part of the Lake Chad, a development that the Boko Haram terrorists are exploiting. Sources say the president has convened an urgent meeting with the service chiefs while the families of the latest victims of Boko Haram are being identified before government pronouncement on the tragic attacks. And the Senate Committee on Defense says collaborative working relationship between the National Assembly and the Executive is critical in formulating appropriate policies and development of institutional structures towards combat and security challenges faced by the nation today. This was during an oversight of the committee to agencies under its legislative purview. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports. This is the scenario heralding the arrival of the Senate Committee on Defense to the National Defense College, Abuja. Presentation by the Commandant of the College, Rear Admiral Adeniyi Oshonowo, puts performance for the 2018 appropriations at 60.59 percent, with about 27 percent of the capital funds released. More funds are required to ensure some of the ongoing projects are completed within time frame. More priority should be given to the defense sector because they play a very, very prominent role in securing lives and property of our citizens. At the National Space Research and Administrative Agency, paucity of funds is also a major challenge with only 18% of the 2018 appropriations released. We will work together with our counterparts in the executive to uh, or rather to advocate for the Defence Space Administration on the needs and the importance of the role that they play. We already have partnership uh, with some international organizations. Uh, she partnership in terms of de demonstrating the technology. That is very key and training. The Senate Committee on Defence was also at the Defence Intelligence Agency and the Military Pensions Board in continuation with its oversight functions in Abuja, Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Still on oversight, uh, the House of Representatives has praised the resilience of the Nigerian army and its ability to perform its duty w of protecting lives and property in the country despite limited resources. The House Committee on Army expressed this as it toured the South-South and Southeast commands of the Nigerian army on oversight. National Assembly correspondent Omotola Omojala reports. Traversing five states of the south, southern and eastern parts of the country, the committee inspected the facilities at the different commands of the Nigerian army to check the living and working conditions of troops. The committee received briefs on the various engagements of the commands in their areas of responsibilities and commended the strategic collaborations between the commands and their host communities. It also expressed satisfaction with payment of allowances of troops in most of the commands. We've gone around and we've, the places that we've gone, all the commanders have told us that up to date, this has been paid in some of the places and we're glad about that one. The committee, however, requested for more to be done in the area of accommodation. There has been continuous incremental improvement in the infrastructure in the barracks. Not, not up to the level that we want, but at least some work has started. Because if you look at some of the barracks that we saw, for instance, in, um, in Wari, uh, if you look at the state of the barracks there, and if you look at if some of our colleagues who went to other places like Calabar and so forth, even places like Jos, the quarters that the officers are staying are not good enough. General Officer Commanding 6th Division Major General Jamil Saham expressed delight at this step taken by the committee and assured of smooth working relations between the commands for the security of the region. The committee also paid courtesy visit on governors of Imo and Abia State 
calling for deeper cooperation between the state government and the army within their jurisdiction. Omotola Omojola, NTA News. The Nigeria Police Force has refuted claims that the death of Michael Adiku, a dismissed policeman and ex-convict and a sectional gang leader who confessed to have killed 31 persons, including police personnel, during the Offa Bank robbery, vindicates the Senate President, Bukola Saraki. A statement signed by the Force Public Relations Officer, Juma Moshud, said all five suspects that indicted and implicated Senator Bukola Saraki are alive and now in court. He noted that evidence from the five suspects are enough to prosecute the Senate President. The Nigeria Police Force said Michael Adiku was not murdered but slumped and died in detention while investigation into the Offer Bank robbery was ongoing. The police reiterated that the deceased was not among the five gang leaders that indicted and implicated the Senate President. This is NTN Network News. Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, and the State Party Chairman of All Progressives Congress, APC, Al Haji Abdullahi Abbas Sunusi, on behalf of the government, state party executives, party members, and the good people of the state, cordially welcome the National Chairman of APC, Comrade Adams Oshomole, and other national officers to a grand rally to welcome the campees from the People's Democratic Party and the Kwankwasia Movement to APC. Date. Sunday, 25th November 2018, venue Sunny Abacha Stadium, Kofar Mata Kano. Time 10 a.m. prompt. Among the high profile decompies are gubernatorial aspirants, former state party executives, National Assembly, and State Assembly members, state party elders and stakeholders, former commissioners, and numerous well known party members. You are welcome. Malam Muhammad Garba. Announcer. The Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing wishes to inform stakeholders and the general public that the two-day stakeholders workshop on the draft National Public Buildings Maintenance Policy scheduled to hold on Monday 26th and Tuesday 27th November 2018 at the Three J's Hotels Limited Abuja has been postponed. A new date will be communicated later. We regret the inconveniences this postponement may cause. Announcer, Director, Planning, Research and Statistics for Permanent Secretary, Works and Housing. Nigeria, now still one of the few countries in number of pregnant women still they die from things we're not supposed to kill them high pass. Thank God for things like family planning or childbirth spacing, where they help reduce number of women where they die because of seed and carry belly. When we plan and put space between the times with the carry belly, our mama and begin them no good die anyhow. If all the women we need within the fit use they control how they take their belly. Well, you put the call contraceptives. Don't go fit prevent the death of about 1.5 million picking them and 31,000 women inside the next 10 years. Our leaders, we now need to settle this matter by making sure say, family planning services reach every woman inside the country. No woman supposed to suffer or die because she want bomb picking. We must join hand and get it together, make our future for bright. Now, Federal Ministry of Health, they bring on this message. This is to bring to the notice of those concerned that the verification exercise for the implementation of HR module of IPIS for all federal civil servants in the outstations of core MDAs in Lagos State, venue Tafar Baliwa Square, Lagos, federal civil servants and Ministry of Defense offices and schools, 81 Division Boni Camp, Lagos, and NAF Base Ikeja, Lagos, federal civil servants of Unity Schools at the respective Unity Schools. All verifications will hold between 26th November to 7th December. 
affected employees are expected to present themselves along with the original copies of the following documents. Online records update slip, completed and signed personnel verification form, birth certificate or statutory declaration of age, relevant educational credentials, professional certificates, letter or gazette of first appointment, last three promotion letters and current office ID card. Verification by proxy will not be entertained. Mrs. Winifred E. Eyo Ita, Head of Civil Service of the Federation, announcer. The Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Kichuku Enelema, wishes to inform the public that the 10th meeting of the National Council on Industry, Trade and Investment, under the broad theme of ease of doing business in Nigeria, the role of states and local governments, is scheduled to hold from Monday, 26th to Friday, 30th to November 2018, at the International Conference Center, Umahia, Abia State. Monday, 26th November, arrival and accreditation of delegates. Tuesday, 27th, technical session. Wednesday, 28th, syndicate session. Thursday, 29th, ministerial session. Friday, 30th, departure. For further inquiries and registration, visit the website or contact Director, Policy, Planning, Research and Statistics and Deputy Director, Planning on these numbers. Mr. Edet S. Agban, Permanent Secretary, Announcer. <laughs> Charge Plus. Dial star 479 hash to know more. Airtel, the smartphone network. The inaugural Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit holds on the 27th to the 29th of November 2018. Summit will take place at the Banquet Hall, Presidential Villa, Abuja, with the theme, Activating Diaspora Investments for a Diversified Economy. For registration, visit www.ndis.gov.ng. For participation and sponsorship details, please call Email admin at ndis.gov.ng. The Nigerian Diaspora Investment Summit. Harnessing Nigeria's investment opportunities. Thank you for staying with us on NTN Network News. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says President Muhammad Buhari is committed to ensuring all-round development of Enugu State and the Southeast as a whole. Professor Oshimbajo stated this at the unveiling of the campaign office of the All Progressives Congress gubernatorial candidate, Senator Ayogweze. Vice President Yemi Osibajo recounts the various infrastructural projects of the federal government aimed at transforming the Southeast to include the Second Niger Bridge, road rehabilitation, appointments of Igbo sons into senior ministerial positions, among others, assuring that more is yet to come to Enugu State if they work towards the victory of APC at all levels come 2019 general elections. Be sure that you will be fairly treated and that you will get your just dues. Everything that has been promised will make sure that they are done. Inaugurating the governorship and presidential campaign offices in Enugu, Professor Osibajo expresses confidence at the choice of President Buhari and Senator Ayogweze by the party. For the victory of the APC in Enugu State. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, Senator Ayogweze, on his part, assured the Vice President that all progressive Congress in Enugu State is solidly behind the presidential ambition of President Buhari as his five-point agenda is same with the state. But I want to assure you that we have a message from Mr. President. Tell him that we are sleeping on the same bed and dreaming the same dreams. Enugu State Chairman of APC, Ben Moye, stated that the event is an opportunity to endorse the President and his vice for the 2019 general elections. In Enugu, Ngozi Silver Technical, NTA News. 
And as the 2019 presidential election draws closer, more groups are drumming support for the re-election bid of President Muhammad Buhari. The inauguration of the Buhari campaign organization in Ondo State is an indication of support of stakeholders in the state. Abiola Ario reports. The various achievements of President Muhammad Buhari in various facets of the nation have been attracting accolades, a situation that has informed the support for the re-election bid of the president. To further affirm this, members of the campaign group from the various local governments of the state converged on Akure, the Ondo state capital, for its inauguration. The national coordinator of the campaign organization, Mr. Pasari Danla, said canvassing support for the second term of the president became necessary to consolidate on the current achievements recorded and take the nation to the next level. During a short time, he has curbed insurgency, fight against corruption, diversification of the economy. And that's a kudos. And we are ready in those states to the national coordinator and to make him president until. 2023. To the various speakers at the program, the determination of the president to transform the country informed their support, urging people to cast their votes for him. In Akure, Abiola Rio, NTA News. Still on the political scene, the presidential candidate of the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, Inua Ahmed Salal, has set up his presidential campaign team with Professor Bankole Okuwa. As chairman, the party's deputy national chairman, Mohamed Kumo, is the vice chairman. The campaign team also consists of all 13 gubernatorial candidates of the party. Abubakar Abdullah Sokoto is the director general of the campaign team. The council will also, will after. to the to him senator inang also explained that the electoral act amendment bill transmitted to the president on the 8th of november has been examined and is receiving attention. To the credit of the National Assembly and to the greater, greater credit of Mr. President, this administration and this president has assented to the highest number of bills in the history of this republic from 1999. He stated that the president, since assumption of office in 2015, has considered more than 100 bills. In other news now, sequel to the state of emergency declared on water sector by Governor Mohamed Umar Jibrilla, Adamawa State Government, in collaboration with the European Union, is making concerted efforts to provide portable water to the people of the state. Yusuf Jika has details. Following the state of emergency declared by Governor Muhammad Umar Jibrila of Adamawa State on water sector, recently the correspondent ministry has taken it as a challenge to see that the job is not only achieved but excellently performed. For a start, the rehabilitation and extension of water supply system in Fufori local government is receiving adequate attention while two 600,000 litre water tanks are in the process of completion, drilling of six industrial bowls, renovation of office accommodation, as well as networking of water pipes up to 7.5 km in the metropolis also on the way. All this, according to the ministry, is to provide people with portable water with a view to ensuring healthy society. Isa Alilu Ahmed maintained that all the 21 local government areas of the state will get necessary attention of the emergency and called on the people to support the ministry in achieving optimum results. In Yola, Yusuf Jika, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. We now join Dotu in Lagos for more reports. Over to you, Dotsu. Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome to Lagos. 
In its drive to promote healthy living and made in Nigeria goods, Erisco Foods Limited, one of Nigeria's indigenous manufacturing companies, has launched its new set of improved natural products in Lagos. Annie Daniels has details. Over the years, individuals and organizations have employed several channels to ensure adequate production and supply of food. This was what prompted the Chief Executive Officer of Erisco Foods Limited, Eric Omofia, to delve into the production of tomato paste called Rikjiko tomato paste. Not relenting in its vision, the company has gone beyond producing just a tomato paste to other products like Najiko sugar, drinks and lots more. To ensure that consumers get value for money, Erisco Foods Limited launched its new natural Erisco, Rikjiko and Najiko brands of tomato paste, Najiko 3-in-1 Gary Mix, first of its kind, and Erisco Milk Cubes, all made in Nigeria and affordable. Omar Fear added that implementing the ban on importation of tomato paste and sincerity of all concerned authority in the federal government's desire to make Nigeria an industrialized nation is pertinent to grow the nation's economy. Consumers and distributors of the products attest to their authenticity. provided a platform to unveil the brand's new ambassador, Chua Machuku Kapota. Erisco Foods began operations in 2009 in Lagos. Annie Daniels, NTA News. A one-day sensitization workshop on the vast local content opportunities derivable from the NLNG Train 7 has ended in Port Harcourt, River State. Emmanuel Lene reports that the Executive Secretary, Nigeria Local Content Monitoring Board, Simbi Wabote, delivered the keynote address at the event. The Nigeria LNG was incorporated to harness Nigeria's vast natural gas resources for export as well as create values for stakeholders with six trains currently producing 22 million tons of LNG per annum. The company plans to build train 7 that will lift the total capacity to 30 million metric tons per annum of LNG. The local content workshop is to sensitize interested public on opportunities inherent in the LNG train 7 project as well as create platform for local supply chain available in country. We have been in the forefront of Nigerian content capacity building, but it's now very enabled by the emergence of the law, and we comply with the law as a very responsible company, and we believe that Nigerian content will be a catalyst in helping us achieve our desired objective. Executive Secretary Local Content Monitoring Board, Engineer Simbi Wabute, explained that the workshop, which is a follow-up to other workshops, is to inform stakeholders on a opportunities for the local content as we pursue these people along an opportunity given to indigenous companies to participate in a project like student seven it is the expectation of many that this workshop will not only deepen Nigeria's content in the oil and gas industry, but will also deepen indigenous capacity in the sector. In Port Harcourt, Emmanuel Lene, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. President American University of Nigeria, on behalf of the university community, invites the general public to the 13th Founders Day ceremony of the university. 
The annual event celebrates the founder, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar GCON, and honors his uncommon philanthropy and unparalleled commitment to world-class education, successful entrepreneurship, and sustainable development in Nigeria, Africa, and the world. The keynote speaker at the event is an outstanding professional in both the public and private sectors, Senator Ben Murebrus, MON. The event is scheduled to hold on Saturday, 24th November 2018 by 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the Lamido Aliu Mustafa Commencement Hall, American University of Nigeria Main Campus. You are welcome. Announcer, Don Deckley, President, American University of Nigeria, Yola. Sometimes in life, the advantage you need is the advantage you already have. With the fastest speeds at the best prices and nationwide coverage, Glow 4G LTE is the ultimate advantage. G LTE from Glow, you always win. You can use my Glow 4G LTE. Just do this. Glow 4G LTE. Wow. Yes. Don't worry, I'm going to connect you to my hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy 25% more data when you auto renew your plan. Your number one 4G network nationwide. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Hustle by Google. Psst, you in the air conditioned office with the itchy throat. Strap cells. Girl in the spotlight with the raspy throat. Strap cells. You in the pollution. It's you. Dry throat. Strap cells. Hello in the downpour with the scratchy throat. Take strap cells. Strap cells, with its soothing medicinal ingredients, will heal the harm done to your throat from external factors. Strap cells. Strap cells. Strepsils for a dry, itchy, raspy, scratchy throat. Team Huddle. But we lost. Don't be tired, guys. This isn't a loss. It's a practice for winning. Nothing makes a mother prouder than seeing her child growing up. But I know as he learns to lead, he'll face even more dirt, germs, and risk of illness. That's why in changing seasons, you need strong dental protection. Because dental protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Growing up needs dental protection. season there's no place like home get a go tv decoda and go tenor and one month of go tv max subscription for only 6900 naira go tv live it love it thank you for staying with us on business news on, on network news and muplang now joins us with business news muplang it's over to you thank you elizabeth and it's a warm welcome to you on business news the federal government's privatization process has freed up more than $3 billion that was being consumed annually by public enterprises through subventions, waivers, and unpaid taxes, among others. Director General of the Bureau of Public Enterprises, Alex Oko, who made this known, said the Bureau has initiated and executed far-reaching reforms in telecommunication, pensions, seaports, debt management, solid minerals, and the power sector reform that led to the successful unbundling, privatization, and in some cases, concessioning 
of the successor companies created out of the power holding company of Nigeria. And more jobs have been created in the last three years under the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, stimulating the country's economic growth. All the 14 blending plants that went comatose before the initiative have been revived, producing more than 4 million tons of NPK fertilizer annually. To this end, key players in the fertilizer initiative have tanked the total ban on NPK importation. Has helped to stimulate investment in blending, blending plants, blending factories. So we have more blending plants today. And these blending plants today together have a combined capacity of about 4 million tons. So why do you need to import? And on the stock market, trading closed on a downward note today as the all share index and market capitalization lost 0.96% to close at 31,678.70. Investors exchanged 223.8 million shares in 2,819 deals. Diamond Bank, Nigerian Breweries, and Zenith Bank were the toast of investors, recording over 13 million shares each. Honeyflower led the gainers table by 9.90% and was followed by PZ. That's business news. Thank you for watching. I am Muplang Dakok. It's over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Muplang. Now, Reverend Chidi Okorafo has been re-elected to lead the Assemblies of God Nigeria as the General Superintendent for another term of four years. This was at the 36th General Council meeting of the church held at Evangel Camp, Opoto, Ebony State. Jude Abugu reports. In an election decided by over 10,000 accredited eligible voters, made up of 7,350 ordained ministers and 2,795 delegates, Reverend Okorafo polled 5,990 votes out of the 6,782 valid vote casts and was returned elected according to the church's constitution. also returned for another term as the church's general secretary, Reverend Godwin Amowo, the deputy general superintendent, the general treasurer, and the assistant general secretary. Earlier in a message to prepare the delegates for the exercise, Reverend Charles Apia Boachie of Assemblies of God, Ghana, urged members to put aside their differences and join hands to make Assemblies of God, Nigeria, stronger. At the end of the exercise, Reverend Okorafo thanked members of the church. In the next four years, we shall be ringing gospel bells because uh, we need to, we've already made some plans to take the church back to our purpose of being, which is evangelization. Fifteen others from different zones were also elected into the church's executive council. From Evangel Camp, Oboto, Ebony State, Jude Abugu, NTA News. Let's now join Mohammed in Medugri for our stories trending in that zone. Mohammed. Good and welcome to Medugri. In its effort to empower women, Victim Support Fund VSF has distributed cash to women affected by insurgency in Burma local government area of Borno State. Rebecca Baturi reports. The Victim Support Fund Women Empowerment Distribution Project with the team strengthening delivery of enterprises for women victims of insurgency is aimed at alleviating suffering of women in Adama, Borno, and Yobe states. The Chairman Presidential Committee on Northern Initiative, Teoflos Danjuma, represented by the Vice Chairman Tijani Musa Tumsa, appreciated the resilience and courage of the people of Burma and employed the men to understand that once a woman is empowered, the whole family will be empowered. The initial number that we are targeting in this community for this program is 2,500 women. Now, this is in addition to the earlier programs that we have had. And the numbers are now 20,000 women that we have targeted 
and have reached with this programming. And we intend to do more. Representatives of partners for VSF expressed gratitude for the effort of VSF in Burnu, while the representative of the beneficiaries, Haja Aji, thanked the VSF for the support, which she said will go a long way in alleviating their sufferings. In Meduguri, Rebecca Boturi, NTA News. In other news, Shehu of Borno, Abwakar Ibn Umar Garwe Alamin Al Kanami, has turbaned Deputy Director of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Michael Galway, as Zanna Kadima of Borno, for his contribution towards fighting polomyelitis and child killer diseases in the state. Jesse Tavida was there and now reports. The title of Zanna Kadima means Ambassador of Shehu of Borno on healthcare services, especially on immunization. While presiding over the Tobanin, Sheho of Borno Abubakar Ibn Umar Garbe al Kenemi said, Michael Galway, the Deputy Director of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, has done a lot in the state towards ensuring children are immunized against poliomyelitis and other killer diseases, making him worthy of the title. I'm quite, quite honored to be given this uh, privilege today by His Royal Highness, uh, the Shehu of Borno. It's, um, it's a high honor for me, for the people that I work for, and also for the polio program here in Borno and in Nigeria. There is a national program and also a state program for immunization. So my role is to support the government to make sure that immunization is available for all children in Borno. The news and Academy of Borno, Michael Galway, was full of delight with the title and promised to continue the good work of ensuring polio eradication in Meiduguri. Jesse Tafida, NTA News. That concludes our contribution. The rest of Network News continues after this timeout. Minister of Finance, Mr. Zainab Ahmed, cordially invites stakeholders to the 2018 National Council on Finance and Economic Development, NACOFED Conference, theme, unlocking the potentials of non-oil sector as a sustainable source of government revenue. Date, Monday, 26th to Wednesday, 28th November, 2018. Venue, Hotel 17, Tafabalewa Way, Kaduna. Time, 9 a.m. daily. Special guest of honor, Malam Nasser el -Rufai. Governor, Kaduna State. Expected at the conference includes the Honorable Minister and Permanent Secretary of Finance. Arrival date is Sunday, 25th November, 2018, Dr. Mahmoud Isa Duse, Permanent Secretary, announcer. It's packed with B vitamins to fuel your greatness. To anyone who ever pushed me to go further. Nigeria cordially invites you to the closing ceremony of 11th International Arts and Crafts Expo, Abuja, Inak, 2018, and the launching of International Cultural Diplomacy for Peace. Date, Saturday, 24th November, 2018. Venue, FCT Exhibition Pavilion, beside International Conference Center, Abuja. Time, 5 p.m. Chairman of the occasion, Dr. Ogunaya Onu, Honorable Minister of Science and Technology. Special guest of honor, Mr. Tony Akiotu, CEO and GMD, Dark Communications, Royal Father of the Day, Al Haji Ismaila Muhammad, Sirki Karshi, Mother of the Day, Dr. Mrs. Gloria Laraba Shuda, National President, National Council for Women's Societies, Chief Host, Al Haji Lai Muhammad, Honorable Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism, Host and Announcer, Otumba Olusha Gunushiwe, Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture. 
Thank you for staying with us. Talking sports now, Nigeria Super Falcons in a make or mark game against Equatorial Guinea Saturday in Ghana as touch of unity towards southwest Nigeria. Kenna Imagwadike.